Greetings and welcome to the Enterprise Church of Christ online service. It is a pleasure to have you here with us. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. There's a song that we sing that talks about the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for us. In our souls, we celebrate with joyous hallelujahs as we thank God for saving us. It is this same God that David was appealing to in Psalm 61, verses 1 through 4, when he wrote, Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the cover of thy wings. Selah. Today, that same enduring, merciful, loving God remains unchanged. In this world of chaos, we have a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. We have a peace in the middle of our storms. And even as we battle, we know that we shall be victorious in Christ. Let us therefore recommit on shifting our focus from the problem back to Him the problem solver. Amen. The theme for the year is Victory in Jesus and the scripture is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. again we are in the land of the living lord thank you lord for raising us up this morning for your unfailing love towards us for your faithfulness your kindness and for your grace without you we are nothing with you our strength is renewed daily your love is more powerful than sin and death and we are grateful we ask you for a mind like christ for faith of christ for love of christ and for the strength of christ let us continue to run the race that is set before us, Lord, as you continue to tarry along with us, Lord. As you continue to prepare us, Lord, for the storms, Lord, and the journey ahead. Thank you for affirming us as your children, made in your own image, Lord, and continue to give us the victory today and forevermore. Bless us, guard us, guide us, Lord. And a special prayer to those who are gathered here in your name that are bowed before you, Lord, believing in you time and time again, Lord. These things we ask in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Look upon the remainder of this service, Lord, and your children today. In Jesus' name, amen. The lesson is taken from Jeremiah chapter 29, reading from verses 10 to 14. This is what the Lord says, When seventy years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me, and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, 
declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Here ends the lesson. May God continue to add his blessings to the service. Thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his steadfast love endure forever. Deliver us, O God, from our salvation, and gather and save us from among the nations, that we may give thanks to thy holy name and pray in thy praise. Blessed and eternal God, this morning, God, we come once more again in the holy present. We praise your name this morning, we give you thanks. For your protection and your mercy let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O lord my strength and my salvation when the burdens get too heavy and life get rough 
we can go to the master in prayer your word say that everything that have breath praise your name this morning oh god we come before thee as you take us safely to the night and bring us to face another day another morning lord and we give you praise we thank you for your mercy cover us lord under the blood of jesus keep us clean by your power take over life lord strengthen us by the spirit of love and unity let us stay awake arise oh god let healing and deliverance come you are the living god never to leave us nor forsake us let us all the plans of the enemy be destroyed in the mighty name of jesus one songwriter say from every stormy wind that blow from every swelling tide of woe there is a calm a sure retreat is found beneath the mossy seed there is a place where jesus shed the oil of gladness on our head a place that all beside more sweet it is the bloodstained mossy seed lord let us come together let us pray this morning lord that the enemy plans will be destroyed lord in the mighty name of jesus humble us before us before you lord bring us to our knees open the heart of men women everywhere that they will come to surrender lord unto you hear thine own have thine own way this morning oh god this morning lord we come before thee no power no strength of our own but lord take over body soul and spirit make us clean vessels let your word today find good grounds you say it will not return to you void but it will accomplish that which is set forth strengthen your man servant with boldness of your spirit and truth that you will be done in the mighty name of jesus lord have you one way this morning guide and direct us lord as we look around the world, Lord, we see many things. There are volcanoes. Lord, there are people dying like flies. Lord, there are tornadoes. There are many things this morning. But Lord, help your people, Lord, will humble and pray and seek your face. Turn from our wicked ways. This morning, oh God, you are the only God. You are the only deliverer of men. Lord, you can deliver us from the fiery furnace. You can deliver us this morning from the dragons lord you can deliver us this morning make a way where there seems to be no way even through the red sea this morning oh god have mercy upon us cleanse our heart help us to turn sin or turn from our wicked ways lord there are signs of the time everywhere lord help us to look up for we know redemption dread now this morning oh god hear our cry this morning as we pray for the world Lord, we pray for the world this morning, oh God. Remember the Caribbean islands. Lord, we pray, Lord, let men, boys and girls, women, Lord, everywhere repent. Lord, have mercy upon us. Guide and direct us, Lord. As we go through this day, Lord, be with us. We thank you for your sparing mercies upon us, oh God. Have your own way this morning. Guide God and direct us this morning as we go through this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Again, it's a pleasure to come into your home to share the word of God with you. It's always a blessing when I can come and bring the word of God to hearts. I know that they're hungry for the word. Today we live in a world where people are more concerned about what others think about them, more so than even what God thinks. But I want to ask you a question today. What does God think of you? What do you believe that God is saying about you today? Beloved, I believe that all of us need a personal relationship with him 
of need, beloved, to get ourselves in tune with him so that he can have and, and us can have a right relationship with each other. The, the, the question I want to ask you today is what does God think of you? And this is taken from Jeremiah chapter 20, 29 verse 10 to 14. But I'm going to read Jeremiah chapter uh, 29 verse 10 and 11 in your hearing. It says, For thus saith the Lord, after seven years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and other evil to give you a future. And what we're going to explore this today as we look at what the word of God says, what God does God think of us. Let us bow our hearts as we invite the presence of God to come into our lives and our hearts at this time. Father, we bow to give thanks to you. We thank you, Father, for another day that, Lord, we can share this word. God, another day that, Father, we can be found in your presence to worship you, Lord, as we meditate around your word. Bless hearts, Father, to be touched by this word. May you strengthen us. May you be find courage and grace. And may your Holy Spirit minister to those who need this word. There's some heart that need to be touched by this word, Father. And we ask that your blessing will go forth, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. As we look at our text today, as we look at this background, this was a part of a letter that was written by the prophet Jeremiah and sent to the remnant of, of, of the elders who were taken away into captivity under Nebuchadnezzar and carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. So there, the, the city is experience, experiencing a time where, beloved, the people of God are being taken into captivity and Jeremiah is writing this letter to them to let them know what God is saying to them, what is going to happen to the future, what how God is going to address their situation. Firstly, the Lord spoke to the prophet and told the people that they need to get comfortable in Babylon. In Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 5, they need to get comfortable in Babylon and they need to have children. They need to procreate and have children and build houses and plant vineyards and plant gardens because it is not going to happen right away that they are going to return to Jerusalem. There is going, they are going to be in Jerusalem for a period of 70 years. And therefore God is saying to them that you need to get comfortable because this is where your home is going to be for the next 70 years. So God spoke to them. He said to them, build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruits. Take wives and begat sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbandmen. So that they might bear sons and daughters that you may increase and not diminish. God was interested in them. God told them that they need to procreate and populate where they were going. Because they were going to be there for a period of time. Secondly, he said to them, don't let the prophets and the diviners deceive you with dreams nor false prophecies. Because he said that he, he has not sent them. We have a, a situation in our world today where people are speaking a lot of prophetic words but that are not coming to pass. A lot of, there the, are the many prophets, it would seem today, but they're speaking a lot of falsehood. They're prophesying what God has said, what he has said about his people, but it is not coming to pass. And the Bible tells us that the way how we discern a person as a prophet is what, whatever they say, when it comes to pass, then we know that God has spoken by that person. God said to them, don't let your prophets and your diviners deceive you. Because they will come speaking all kinds of things about what God said. But God is telling them what he has already told them about the future. That they're going to be, be there for a period of 70 years in Babylon. And thirdly, 
He said to them, God will visit the people after 70 years in Babylon and cause them to return to the city of Jerusalem. So this was going to be a long haul that they are going to be in Babylon. That going, they are going to be taken captive, into captivity. And it was all because of the sins of the people. It was all because they were in rebellion against God. Whenever, beloved, we are in rebellion against God, God will move to correct the sins of our lives. He will move to chastise us. He will move to bring us into humility and to bring us before him because God is a God who loves his people to humble themselves before him. So this is what God said to the people that they need to remain there. They need to plant vineyards and they need to flourish because they are going to be there for a period of, of time. Population scientists tell us that there are over 6 billion people on the face of the earth. 6 billion people. Sometimes we feel, we feel alone among a, such a number, such a size of people. And we feel so insignificant at times. We feel that we don't matter. I know there are times I feel, as I look around the world, that God is not seeing, that God is not hearing. We feel so insignificant in the world. So often we feel that God does not know us personally because there's, there, if there are six billion people in the world, he cannot know my name. He cannot know me as, a, as, a, as an individual person. But the Bible tells us that God knows everything. There is to know about the six billion people on planet earth. God knows you intimately. He knows your name. He knows your address. He knows your telephone number. You realize that there's something so unique about every human being. We are given in this life a set of fingerprints. And you know that they're never, in, in, in spite of the six billion people on earth, no two fingerprints are the same. Which means that God has orchestrated that in life as we come here and on this plane of reality, that even our fingertips, even the, our handprints are different. You speak about identity. You speak about individuality, what God does, how, how prof profound it is, how God is with us. That even our fingerprints, you can have two identical twins, and yet their personalities and their fingerprints are different because we are all individuals before God. What application can we learn from verse 11 as we look at this text this morning? And that verse 11 tells us, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. This is what God is saying to them, what he's thinking of them. And beloved, we can apply that thought to our hearts today. We can apply that to our lives, even, even the lives of, of Christians in the church. What does God think of us today? What application can we draw from this passage and apply it to the church today and apply it to our own lives? So often we do not think that God thinks about us in light of the things that we're going through. Daily we face struggles, we face uh, setbacks and circumstances. Daily we have stresses, daily things happen in our lives and so often it, it, it appears that God does not see us, he does not think about us. But let me say to us that God will use a time on this time in, your, in our lives when, when you even think that you're forgotten and, and you think that you're forsaken. God uses that time in your life to make you stronger and better to bring glory to himself. Let me tell you something about God today. God works in the dark. And even though when people don't see what he's doing, Oh, beloved, he is working it out and he's working in the backside. He's working in the, uh, behind the scenes and he's working your life to bring glory to him. What when people cannot see, sometimes we want, we want to be up front and we want for people to see us. But also often it is those on the backside. It is those who are out of the sight of mankind that God is working personally in their lives. That God is working his purpose out. 
And beloved, God is working in your heart today because he knows your name. He knows who you are. He knows where you live. He knows every circumstance that you're going through because he's thinking about you because you are on his mind today. Beloved, there's no place that you can go. There's no person in this world that God is not thinking about. But you need to get right with him. You need to come into a right relationship with him in order for him to begin to work in your life to bring his purpose to fruition in your life so beloved the first point i want to make this morning is how will how well does god really know you how well does god really know you god says i know the thoughts i think towards you this is what god is saying was saying to the people i know what what I'm thinking about children. We make the application to the, today. God was speaking to the children of Israel. They were taken into captivity into Babylon. And God was reminding them that in spite of their pains and suffering, that they were on his mind. In spite of the fact that times, at times we go through negative circumstances. At times, but battles of our lives are difficult. At times, we meet setbacks and heartaches. At times, things happen that are negative. It does not mean that God is not thinking about you. You are on his mind. His work is perfect in their lives. When he is finished, he will change them. God is working his purpose out. He took them down into Babylon for a reason. And beloved, even now as you go through your situation, God is working his purpose out in your life. God, God's knowledge of us as individuals as we look at it today. Let's look at his knowledge of us. There are six billion people in the world as I said to you. And God has every one of them on his mind. God sees you as an individual. Beloved, you are before God. Your life is before him. He knows you the way that you take. He knows every circumstance about you. And beloved, when you come into harmony and fellowship with him, then he's able to work his purpose out. Even though there's six billion people and God wants to work in our lives on an individual basis, we must we must have a right relationship with him in order for him to work his purpose out in our lives. There are six billion people, but sometimes our lives are, are apart from God and he cannot work in our circumstance. So beloved, we need to get ourselves into his will. Our lives right. He cares about us as individuals. And beloved, you are always on his mind. God so loves this world. God in John 3, 16, that he gave us his only begotten son. Now, whomsoever believes in him should not perish because you are on his mind that but shall have everlasting life because he's thinking about you. He sent Jesus Christ to die in your place. What about God's knowledge of us is intimate? God's knowledge of us is intimate. He knows everything about you. Matthew chapter 10 verse 29 to 31 tells us what the Lord thinks about us and it says, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and yet not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than the many sparrows. This is how God thinks about you. You are valuable to him. You are even he sees a sparrow, a little sparrow as it falls to the ground. What about your life? What about you? You are precious to him. And he sees every circumstance and every situation that we go through. God places value upon even little sparrows that die. And they do not, they do not escape his attention. Everything that happens in this world, God sees. He takes note of because he's omniscient. He knows everything. He says that the very hairs on our head is accounted for or numbered every year. Of your head. Beloved none of us. Have ever tried counting the hairs of our head. Because it, it is an awesome hill task. To, to, to count the hairs of our heads. But God knows everyone. To show how intimate he is. With his creation. He promises to take care. Of the weighty issues of our lives. He knows every possible thing. 
there is to know about you. Every secret that you have in your life, he knows. He knows he, our thoughts. He knows your motives. He knows your plans. He knows your dreams. He knows about you. He can read your thoughts. He knows your mind. He knows that, and he knows also the thoughts that he think towards you because you are on his mind. His knowledge of us is intimate, beloved. Oh, hallelujah. His knowledge is intimate. Psalms 139 verse 1 to 3 tells us, it tells us, Oh Lord, you've searched me and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path and my, my lying down are, and are acquainted with all my ways. Not some of them, but you, but you are acquainted with all my ways. This is what the psalmist understood about God, the God that he served. That God was so intimate with him that he knew everything about him. He realized that he was always in the presence of Almighty God. And so we too must understand that all of us are in the presence of God always. We cannot hide from him. There's nowhere that you can hide or go that God's presence is not there. The knowledge of the Lord in regard to our lives is always before the Lord. God sees us. He knows the way that we take. He understands our thoughts. That's what makes him who he is. God, the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God. Job tells us that there's nothing that God cannot do, nor does he know. In Job chapter 42 verse 2 it says, I know you can do everything. And that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. God can do anything and he knows everything. It is futile for us to, in the, the 21st century to believe that we can hide from God. Even to believe that God does not exist. There is, beloved. I want to make it clear, abundantly clear, that there is a God. The omnipotent, omniscient God that created all things. He's the creator. And that he knows each and every one of us. And he knows us by name. God knows the heart of every person. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 2 says. Every way of man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord pondereth the heart. God gets into the heart. And God knows what you're thinking. He knows what is going on in your life. He knows what you are, are, are meditating on, on the things that you desire. He knows everything about you. God's eyes are constantly upon the affairs of this life. In Proverbs chapter 15 verse 3, it says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch over the good and the evil. His eyes are on everything. His eye, He sees everything. Nothing happens in this life ever catches off God off guard. Let me repeat that again. There's nothing that happens in this life or even in your life that ever takes God by surprise. He knows about it before it happens. He knows about every circumstance, every situation that is going to transpire, that is going to occur in this life. He knows even before it happens. That's what makes him who he is. Isaiah 46 10 says, Declare the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and i will do my pleasure this is what god is saying i am my counsel will stand who can counsel god who can tell him what decisions to make none of us can and whatever he does and he says will come to pass who can tell him what to do or how to do it beloved that's the power of the god that we serve that's the power of the god that took the children of israel down into egypt down into Babylon, sorry. But God was going to restore them after 70 years. Whatever will happen in this life has to pass through the, the filter of the grace of God before it comes into my life. God allows whatever circumstances there, there is in this life to come into my life. He is the one that allows it. Because if he does not allow it, it cannot come into my life. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, all things work together for the good of those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. And I know I want you 
you to understand today that it did not say all good things work together. It said all things, whether it is good or bad, God can take circumstances that seem so terrible and God can turn them around to bring glory unto himself and can bless your life. That's the power of the God that we serve. That's the power of a God who's great and mighty. There is nowhere that we can go from the presence of the Lord there is no place that he is not present. He's, he's everywhere. He sees everything. And he can do all things. This is what we are declaring about God today. David puts it like this in Psalms 139, verse 7. And David asks a question. Verse 7 to 10. He says, where can I go from your spirit? Or whether can I free from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. God can do anything that he chooses to do. And beloved, God's eyes are upon you. Because he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you, thoughts of peace. He wants to bless you, bless your life. He wants to bless your future. He wants to bless your children. He wants to bless you as you move forward in this life. He wants to prosper you. But beloved, our lives must measure up to his purpose. We must bring align ourselves with the will of almighty god so many people want the blessings of god they want god to prosper them they want god to open doors and to and to do great things they want every time that they shout god in them and that they call upon him that he he shows up and he does great things in their lives but they do not want to serve him and walk with him on a daily basis god knows what he thinks about you he loves you he loves you so much even before you were even before you were who you were even before you came in, into into this life even when you were in your mother's womb he was thinking about you because his love is great over you and secondly let's look at what is really by god's knowledge of you there are those areas of life that are constantly before the lord the areas in our lives that God sees and he's concerned about. God knows our sins. And this is one of the areas that he's concerned about. Because beloved, it is important that we understand that God hates sin with a passion. And he's always concerned about the sins and the lives of humanity. Because those sins will separate us from him. We ask that we... Sometimes that as God that he cannot see, nor does he know what we are doing. God is a God of the past. He's a God of the present. And he's a God of the future. He is no less God today than he was yesterday. He all, will always be God and his power does not diminish. He does not get weaker. As the time goes by, he's still God. And his power is still great. Job chapter 14 verse 16 says, For now thou numberest my steps, dost not thou waste over my sins? Thou dost not watch over my sins. Beloved, it is important for us to understand that sin will separate us from God. And even though God is thinking about you and he loves you, that sin will stand as a barrier. One of the things that we need to realize and humanity needs to realize that sin will separate us from the presence of God. And so many people today are walking in sin, will refuse to confess their sin. So many people believe that they have never sinned, that they don't sin. But you need to confess your sin before God. Sin is a transgression of, of the commandments of God. What God has said to you in his word, and you violate the word of God and the laws of God, you become a sinner. If he tells you thou shall not commit adultery, if he tells you you shall not steal or you shall not kill, then you need to obey the word of God, the law of God. This is what the Lord he laid down. And when you do what he's commanding you not to do, then it will separate you from the very presence of God. Psalms 90 verse 8 says, Thou hast set an, an, 
our iniquities before us, before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance, of, of thy countenance. God sees. God sees the secret things of our hearts. Beloved, I want to let you know that God sees every secret thing that we do. Every lie, everything that we do in secret and we believe that God does not see. I want to tell you today that God sees everything. That you do every white lie. Everything that we do in dark and we believe that man does not see us. Sometimes we care about what man sees and what man thinks about us more than what God thinks or he, what we believe that he does not see. But I want to say to you that God sees everything, even the things that we do in the dark. And God knows about every situation that we find ourselves in. God knows everything he needs to know about Israel's suffering about our suffering he knows also about the wickedness of the Babylonians and even though God knew that they were wicked people yet God is going to use them to chastise his people because the sins of his people were great and beloved so it is with us today we need to remember that the God of yesterday is a God still God today and if he hears his sin yesterday if he moved against his own people the children of Israel to bring them to a place of humility of submission before him he is going to do the same thing to the nations of the earth and he will bring them into an into repentance beloved God will use every opportunity to cause us to understand that he is God and when we will refuse to repent and confess our sins then God will use the forces even the forces of nature to bring us to heal to get us to understand how much he hates sin and that we need to repent and come before him we know what will happen or he knows what will happen in your life nothing that comes your way takes the Lord by surprise nothing that happens in our lives God plans ahead and he knows what is going to happen to us often the burdens and sufferings of life are greater than we feel that we can bear but in the midst of them we have some promises that he's given to us because he's thinking about us even in our times of suffering and heartache, even in the time when we are broken, when situations are, are, are going against us, God is thinking about you. His heart is, his heart is, his mind and his heart is upon you. And sometimes when we turn to him, he will turn around and he will work in our lives. He knows all about our struggles. And we need to trust him that he will bring us through these struggles. God is looking for people today who will trust him. Who in spite of all that the world is doing, all that the negativity that we are experiencing, the COVID-19 and the volcanic eruption in St. Vincent and, 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 and all that is happening in the world, the negativity, God is saying to us, trust me. Trust me because I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace. And not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Beloved, that verse of scripture still applies to us. And we can make it applicable to our lives today. He wants to give us a future and a hope. He cares about what you are facing in your life right now. Everything that you're going through. Sometimes we feel down and out. We feel that life is, has given us a raw deal. But beloved, God will work it out. All things work together for the good of those that love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. Have you been called according to the purpose of his purpose? Right now you are dis discouraged. You feel distressed. You feel that nothing is working together in your life. I want to tell you to have hope today. That your miracle is on the way. That God is about to make a make, do a miracle for you. Open a door for you. Because he's God and he's seen your heart. And he wants to bless you. He wants to bless your way. But he needs for you to trust him. He cares about what we are facing in this life. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7 tells us, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. When you're experiencing trials, humble yourself and trust God. When you're experiencing problems, humble yourself and say, Lord, what, what is your will for my life? Humble yourself before him that we may, uh, uh, that we may ex be exalted in due time, casting all your cares upon him. For he cares 
for you. The secret of all this, beloved, is that we need to humble ourselves before Almighty God and recognize that God knows what He's doing, that He's in the midst and He will guide us. And once we put our trust in Him and we commit our way to Him, He will bring us through whatever we are going through. And he has promised, beloved, to bring us through the storms and the floods and the blood and the fire. He's promised to deliver us because these are His promises. He's promises to provide for us. In every area of our lives. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 says. And he said unto me. My grace is sufficient for you. And my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore most gladly. I will rather boast in my infirmities. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. What do you boast about in your life today? Oh, do you boast about your wealth? Do you boast about your health? Do you What do you boast about? Beloved, you need to boast in the Lord. You need to tell him that he's able. You need to trust him. You need to let him know that and big him up. Let him know that he's able, that you committed your life to him, your way to him. And see him work to bring you through. He has promised rest in the midst of our trials. Matthew chapter 11 verse 20 says, he says to us, come to me all you who labor and are heavily laden and I will give you rest even in the midst of my trials. I can have a rest. I can have peace in my heart because God is with me in my trial. He's with me in my circumstance. Sometimes storms, there are storms that darken the way. Sometimes there are burdens that are hard to carry. And beloved, I, I do not minimize these things. I do not tell people, you know, sometimes you, 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 you want to minimize people's suffering, what they're going through. You cannot really understand a person until you walk a mile in their shoes. But God wants to carry us. Sometimes we feel the burdens are hard to carry. Other times, there are sorrows and troubles that seem to hide the face of the Lord from us. Oh, sometimes the sky seems so dark and the problems seem so many. God knows everything that you are going through today. And he will get you through the circumstance. I know, he says to us, the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you hope and a future. That is what he's thinking about you. I don't know. Sometimes we put our trust in human beings. And we believe that they are friends. The people that we love. And we trust them to the hilt. And sometimes in our times of adversity. Those people desert us. But beloved God promises that he will never leave us. Neither will he forsake us. Do you trust God today? Do you trust what God is saying to you in his word? That he's thinking about you. That he has your future. He has your back. Why won't we trust him as humanity? Why won't you, we as human beings turn and trust him and commit our way to him? Because he's the only one that truly, truly, truly loves us. And can bring us through the circumstances that we are going through. And thirdly, how does the Lord react to this knowledge about you or of you? God has an intimate detail and a personal knowledge of each and every one of us. Each of and every human being, the six billion people on this earth, God knows each person intimately and individually. How does, God know, how does God's knowledge of your life and mine cause him to respond to us? God reacts towards us in the past. He chose Israel over all the other nations. And it's because that he chose them that God was willing to work in their lives. That God was willing to work with them as a nation. He chose them in the past to work in their hearts and in their lives. To bring them and to make them a people that will bless and honor him. He moves by delivering them from Egypt out of bondage. This is how much he cared for the men. They were 450 years down in, in Egypt and they were suffering and they cry, were crying out. God moved to deliver them, to bring them out because he so loved them, because he had, uh, he, he was thinking about them. 
He was thinking about them even as they were crying down in Egypt. And he brought them through the wilderness into the promised land. You see how God is. Oh, hallelujah. They were journeying in the wilderness. He brought them out of Egypt. Then he brought them into the wilderness. And then he brought them into the promised land. He had, he was thinking about them. He was thinking about their future. To give them a, a, a hope and a future. He would give them, bring them into the promised land. Because he had an expected end for them. Bring them into the future. And bless them with a the land. Because he is God. And because he loves his people. He planned no evil, but he planned, he has plans of peace for his people. Plans that were designed to bring them into an expected end. He would bring them into a land, the Bible said, flowing from milk and honey. An expected end. Because God wants to bless us and he wants to do the same for us. He's going to prepare a place for us that where he is, there we shall be also. Because he has an expected end prepared for you. His plans were fulfilled when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. And his blood was shed for us. Because it opened up the door and it made a way that we can now have access to God. And we can now receive the inheritance that God has prepared for each and every one of us. Beloved, are you a child of God today? God is thinking about you. Are you walking in his purpose and, and his precepts? He's thinking about you. Beloved, are the, your circumstances seemingly dark? God is thinking about you because he loves you. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, Jesus Christ became our burden bearer. He became the one who uh, died for us in our place so that we might and receive the inheritance of God, the blessings that God has for us as his people, so that we can now enter into the presence of God beyond the veil and we can experience what God is thinking about us. He wants to bless us. He wants to give us a future. We can now experience that. Because of what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary. Beloved, this is a shouted moment. And I say, I thank you, Jesus, and hallelujah for the cross and what Jesus did. How you made a way. He opened the door that we might enter into the very presence of God beyond the veil. That we can now access the presence of God. We can now have access to the grace of God. We don't need a high priest who will take our sins and the blood into the into the holy of holies. But we can now access God, as we enter ourselves into the holiest of holies, as kings and priests before God. Beloved, isn't that something to shout about? He's thinking about you today. God reacts towards you in the present. If it looks like the Lord has abandoned the children of Israel, it had looked like God had forsaken them. But God was working his purpose out in their lives. They went into captivity into Babylon. They were suffering cruelly at the hands of the enemies. It seems as if their prayers were not being answered. But beloved, that is the best time when it seems that everything is falling apart. That God is working his purpose out in your life. That is how life appears to us at times. You do not have... To face your burdens and trials alone. God would have you to trust him. And to look towards him during your times of adversity. During the time of adversity down in Babylon. God was working his purpose out. And their lives. He was making them a nation. And I want to say to us. Today he's working his plan of redemption in our hearts. Even though at times it seems. Like we are fighting a losing battle. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 tells us. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace. Oh beloved I love this verse of scripture. And the peace of God. Which surpasses all understanding. Will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Commit this word to memory. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7. Commit it to memory. It's a scripture that will bless your life. 
and the peace of God that passeth all understanding. Do you want peace? Jesus is your peace. Do you want joy today? He is your joy because he had he has his thoughts set towards you and he wants to bless you. If there's secret sins or there is some disobedience in your life, you need to take stock though. It may be that the Lord is using that valley to call you and to draw you towards him. So often we pray, Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. And when we look at our lives, we realize that our lives are not in harmony with the word and honor and will of God. We, do, we realize that so many people's lives are out of the will of God. But we call upon God, wanting him to work in, work in our circumstance. But God will work in your circumstance when your life is committed to him when you are at peace with him when your heart is right before him God wants our, our, our hearts to be right our hearts to be right and offer him to work in our purpose if the secret sins he cannot work it out for you and so many of us have secret sins in our lives because we think that nobody knows what I'm doing in the dark but God is seeing you God reacts towards you in his promises. He wants to bless you. Israel thought that the Lord had forgotten them. They thought that God had not remembered about them. That God had forgotten them and that his promises would never come to pass. The promises that he made to their, their forefathers. But beloved, God has us on his mind. God had them on his mind. This text was given to remind them that God had not forgotten them. Jeremiah wrote the letter and I believe it was inspired by God, by the Spirit of God to let them know that God was thinking about them and even though they were going down into captivity that he had them on his mind. The Lord knows where he's taken off. <clears throat> David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou with me, thy rod and the staff, they comfort me. He also went on to say, thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head before and my cup runneth over. Show the goodness. Because God is thinking about you. Show the goodness. And mercy shall follow you all the day. Beloved, beloved, powerful words of, of the Lord. Mercy and truth shall follow you all the days of your life. And we are going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever because he's thinking about us. Beloved, the same is true concerning us today. Not a single promise of the Lord will ever fail. As long as we remain faithful to God, not a single promise that he's made towards you will fail. He will fulfill his word because he's a God of promise. And what he promises will come to pass. He will bring us through the valleys, through the troublesome times of our lives. He is merely working out his will for us. And that the end will be more than justify the means. What God is doing. Beloved, sometimes we think that it's hard and the harsh realities and things we go through. Oh, sometimes we look at them and we are vexed at God. But when he brings us through the blessings, then beloved, we, we can only give him glory and praise. You know who experienced something like this? The man Job. Job went through this kind of circumstance but when he came through his life was a life of victory a life of deliverance a life of blessings first corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 he tells us for our light afflictions which is but for a moment is working for us a more exceedingly and eternal weight of glory beloved god has a plan for your life your duty is to walk in his will in the end, he will end up, we will end up right where 
He wants us. As long as you continue to do the will of God, God will bring you to an expected end. And that is for him to bless you. That is him to prosper your life. Job chapter 23 verse 10 tells us, But he knows the way that I take. And when he has tested me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Beloved, this verse of scripture tickles me. Beloved, when I've come going through the fires of life, when I've gone through the ups and downs and the challenges and the setbacks and the talk names, and I've gone through everything that man can throw at me, that the world can throw at me, then because he's thinking about me, I am going to come forth as pure gold. Because, beloved, he has an expected end for my life. And he has an expected end for your life as well. Everything God allows in your life and mine is an effort to mold us into his image. Everything he allows to bring you into his purpose. But you need, you need to trust him and allow him to work in your life and heart. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13 tells us that we all come into unity of the faith. And the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Beloved, he wants us to grow up. Every trial, he wants us to become more like Jesus and to mature and to grow up. Because he has an expected end for us. Because he's gone to prepare some place for you and I. Because he's thinking about you. Every trial, every test, he's thinking about you. Because he wants to make you a better person. Will you allow him to do his will in your life and heart? What does God think of you today? He thinks about his love for you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He thinks about the plans he has for you. And he thinks about your future. You need to allow him to work his purpose out. The light afflictions that we have are but for a moment but they work an exceedingly great joy that will come. We allow his purpose to be worked out in your life. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Thoughts to give you hope and a future. This is what God is, wants to do for you. I, I know the thoughts. I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future. And the hope that is what he is thinking about you today. He needs you to give him your heart and life. I am appealing to you by the grace of God. If you're not a child of God, that you will give him your life. That you will repent of your sins. And you will turn to him today. Let him change your life. Let him change your story. Bow your hearts with me. Repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I invite him into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and cleanse me. Make me a child. In Jesus' name I pray. If you said that prayer, God has entered into your life. He's come into your heart. And he will guide you. You need to find a good church. You need to be baptized. And you need to begin to study the word of God and talk to your heavenly father. And he will do the rest in your life. Will you trust him today? Let me pray for you. Father, we pray for that man or woman who said this prayer who bowed their hearts <coughs> and repented of their sins. May you turn their lives around. May you change their story. And Father, may you draw them unto yourself. May you bless each man and woman, each boy and girl that will humble themselves before you. Because you have an expected and you have a, you're thinking about them. Father, bless each and every one of us. And may you continue to cover us under your precious blood. May you keep us and Father God, for your children today, may you cover each one. May you bless and continue to guide each one, Father. Lord, as we humble ourselves before you. Because you have an expected end. And you are thinking about us. 
We thank you for doing it. In Jesus' mighty name. It's always a pleasure to come into your home. Peace the Lord is here. We ask again that you would subscribe to us this channel. Let us know what God is doing for you. Let us know what how He's blessing you. Drop us a line. Let us know how, what God is doing in your life. Give us a call. Something on the internet. Let us know what God is doing for you. But but subscribe to this channel. And we ask that you, if you need to grace if you need God to do something to, to, for you if you need uh, prayer whatever you need contact us get in touch with us our telephone number is 243 6410 call us let us counsel you about the love of Jesus Christ let us lead, lead you into a knowledge of God a deeper understanding of the God that we serve and I want to encourage you today that God is thinking about you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. God loves you and he's thinking about you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.